Will my son make it is a topic I became really interested in a couple of years ago. And that was when my own uh, son started to play a bit of rugby. Uh, what really interested me was why some players made it and why some players didn't. And by the term made it, I mean, and made a profession out of playing the game. Uh, this got me interested in doing a bit of research. And there's a couple of things that I pulled out that I want to share with you in this video. Uh, one of them was the theory of relative age, which was highlighted in Malcolm Gladwell's book uh, called Outliers. And what this relative age meant is that if you were born towards the end of the year, that you would then not uh, be as big or as developed as some of the other players. And often coaches picked size over uh, actual talent or skill at a younger age. And this can have an impact on your development as a player because what happens then is you don't get the necessary coaching at that level or you don't get to mix with the other players in the A sides and which is often the case at a junior school level where they don't really change their teams much so if you get missed and under nine you end up not uh, you know playing in that A side and you end up staying in the C side as you come through the age groups which can impact on your development as a player and why this became a concern to me was because my own son was born on the 14th of December. So he would be born towards the end of the year and he would be obviously at a disadvantage, not being as old or as big as the other players that he needs to play with. And that's what made me concerned about the relative age effect. The other thing is uh, Goldsmith, he identifies what he refers to as big six. And I've listed them there. And one of the things that stands out for me is that is preparation. The environment that you grew up in and the family or the family support structure that you have and the sort of culture that you grew up with is, is a big determining factor on whether you make it or not. And I'm going to share with you uh, some of the some players that have made it that I've had an involvement with from a coaching point of view. And hopefully we at the towards the end of this little clip, we get a better understanding of what will determine whether you will make it or not as a player. Uh, the players that have made it. I pulled them out of uh, youngsters who I was involved with uh, as their coach back at Solborn as an 15 players. And what I've really been able to see over these last 20 years of my coaching experiences, uh, I was very fortunate to work with professional players at a professional level who later went on and became Springboks. And it's a nice way of com to compare, you know, what abilities they had to what abilities one can look for, you know, in, in a younger player. And though those players that I worked with were players that were at the Golden Lions uh, Curry Cup team back in 2009, who later went on to be Springboks, uh, Jano van Mark, uh, Willem Alberts, Franco van Amava, Jakob Tata, uh, uh, Janse van Rensburg, the, the, the uh, JC Janse van Rensburg, the prop. And what was interesting about all these players, guys, is they had a really good skill set. You know, they didn't really have many weak areas in the game. So that's obviously a big thing that will determine whether you're going to make it or not. You need to have a really good skill set. And something that I pulled out here, some of the characteristics that, that were displayed by some of these youngsters that have gone on and made it, was they were all able to play more than one position. And I think that's really important. If you look at a guy like Willem Alberts today, he's playing at, at, at lock for the Lions, you know, and he, he initially was a loose forward and a guy like Franco van Amava, you know, he became a springback at lock and he was initially signed as a loose forward. A guy like Jakob Tata, a fly off center wing fullback, you know, he's really versatile. So that's something that must stand out. And that is that a lot of the players that I'm going to share with you now were all able to play more than one position. And a lot of you guys at school get frustrated if a coach moves you into another position and you feel like, you know, that's your only position and you will play nowhere else, you know. And, and unfortunately, if you have that ad attitude, you're less likely to actually make it, you know, after school. So hopefully that will change your, your mindset the next time a coach moves you out of position. That a lot of players that make it actually can play more than one position. Uh, something else that sticks out was quite important is, None of these guys that I'm going to share with you specialized, barring for one player, and that was Chris Clutie. He, he specialized from a young age where he had his mind set on becoming a professional rugby player. But the rest of these guys, they were all able to play and showed ability in other sporting codes. So that's something else that's important. None of them really specialized. Um, something else that's interesting, with which gives a bit of credence towards uh, that uh, outliers 
theory from Gladwell about being born in the first six months of the year. Most of these guys were born in the first six months of the year. A couple were born in July, and you'll see, I think, only one or two players as opposed to born towards the end of the year. Something else that's important is sort of the, the actual tests that were conducted with these players. They were all above average in the tests that were conducted. So that might be a little bit of a reality check for some of you guys. You know, you're not going to make it if, if you're not putting the hard work in. You know, and a lot of these guys in some of the tests you'll see are some of the, that stood out and, and achieved some of the highest results that I've come across as a coach. So that's another important thing that we'll have a look at. And then most of these guys had an older brother, you know, and, and of, this of this list of players, I think only one player, Kevin Laters, you know, he's the oldest in his family. I think he has a younger sister, but the rest of these guys all had an older brother. And the theory behind having an older brother is that your own skill development is enhanced and improved by being able to play with your older brother as you grow up. And that helps you improve, you know, your skills. And, and then at an early age, you get identified as someone who has talent. So that's the big thing about, or the big impact and effect an older brother can have on, you know, on you growing up if you have an older brother. I often get quite excited and, and interested in, in uh, a player who has an older brother that's come through the system. Because again, you know, from this little uh, study that I did, you know, and a bit of research I did, I think uh, you have a better chance, in fact, of actually making it opposed to your older brother. Uh, some of these players, I'm just going to quickly go through them and just list a couple of characteristics about them that made them uh, achieve and, and, you know, make it as a player. Uh, Dean Hammond, he was an absolute natural. He was a multi-talented sportsman. And I know he played uh, provincial rugby and water polo in matric, you know, and uh, he was just a phenomenal talent. Again, could play more than one position. I played him as a loose forward uh, he, and, and, and as a center. And I know now he currently plays for the Ealing Trail Finders on the wing. And they had a very successful win recently against uh, Saracens. And he actually featured quite nicely there with a couple of tries that he scored. So that was Dean Hammond. Uh, things that stood out for me with Dean Hammond was his, how strong his core was. He could do 74 push-ups. And you'll see uh, do, being, able, being able to do 19 pull-ups was one of the highest scores as well that was recorded over that period of time. Um, another player, Matthew Williams, he had a really strong desire to achieve. And Matthew, you'll notice, was also born in July like, uh, like Dean Hammond. And he was also a very good water polo player, so not just only a rugby player. And uh, Matthew was also a younger brother, the youngest brother. He had an older brother, uh, Jeffrey, who recently played for the England's, for England on the seventh circuit. Uh, Dean Aswell, which I didn't mention, he's also the youngest of three brothers. So that's another interesting thing to have a look at there. Uh, thing with Matthew, I played him at loose forward or an eighth man, and he threw in the line out because he had that skill set. And he also, in his uh, professional career, has moved between hooker and loose forward. So again, not someone who's just had a fixed mindset and only said that he's one position and plays one, you know, one position only. Another guy that I want to share with you is Crazy Mona. He also has an older brother and uh, Crazy at school was a loose forward and he's now recently signed for the Sharks as, as a prop. So again, someone, uh, again, the leadership qualities he had was really phenomenal and had a lot of passion, you know, and that's what enabled him to achieve what he has and to make it as a rugby player. Uh, Wandile Medjukevu, yeah, what stood out for me with Wandile was he was 1.9 meters tall as an under 15 boy, and that, that I've yet to come across a boy that height at under 15 level, and I, can, I see he still stands at 1.9 meters tall now as a grown adult, so he, that was like, and I've said, yeah, his leadership was good, and, and really he was a freak, you know, he was a phenomenal athlete as well. And uh, I know recently uh, Jake White got interviewed and he was asked, you know, what, is, what, what does one look for to see whether a player will become a springback or not? And one of the things he said is, you know, you look for that freakish ability in a player. And Wandili was definitely a freak, you know, and that's why he's, he's made it, you know, as a rugby player. Um, if we move on quickly, we'll have a look at Chris Clutie. Chris Clutie is probably the, he was extremely competitive. And he was, him and Rory Cockett were the most competitive players that I've come across. You know, every single little game became a competition with this guy. And he also had an older brother and he's probably the toughest and hardest player I've ever coached. And the characteristic that I find really admirable about Chris is that he has shown a lot of resilience. 
You know, he's not the biggest guy at 1,76 meters tall, and he's picked up a lot of injuries in his playing career, and he's always shown that resilience to really come back and, and recover. So that's something that really stands out for me for, for, for Chris Clutie. And again, another player that could play at, at center and at flank. And I used him at both center and flank when I used to coach him. Here as well, you can see 61 push-ups, uh, 19 pull-ups, 12 minutes, 28 seconds for a three cat. These are all things that stood out, you know, as, as, uh, in his assessments and as a player. Rory Cockett, another, another really uh, big competitor. Uh, he had this amazing self-belief and never stood back for anyone. And, you know, I think the big thing about Rory is a lot of people didn't know is he really trained hard. And I can recall once uh, coming across him over a New Year's Eve uh, time or when he was out of school. And this chap, you know, he didn't drink alcohol and he was even running between Morgan's Bay and Carmouth, you know, regularly. You know, even over, over New Year's Eve, you know, the guy was training. So that really gave him that confidence to not stand back for anybody because he knew himself personally that he had always trained harder than anybody else. So that, that is something that really stood out for me about Rory. Again, phenomenal. Uh, he could have played anywhere in the team. You know, he can even, you could even probably say he would even been able to have handed a loose forward, you know, center, wing, uh, fullback. You know, he just had a phenomenal skill set as a player and also has an older brother and sister. So that's also something interesting to notice there and, and born in June. Uh, next player I want to share is, is Kevin Laters. He is probably one of the most committed and hardworking players I came across. You know, with the skill set as a scrum off, he really put in the hard yards and the time in his in his in his scrum off skill sets. And often after training, this guy would just stay on for ages. You know, perfecting his pass and his box kick. You know, and that really stood out for me about Kevin. He was also a player that could play more than just scrum off, and and could also play in other positions as well. So just to look at it, guys, uh, statistically, you can see um, some of the things I just pulled out there. Wandele was the tallest player at 1.9 meters tall. Dean Hammond and Chris Clutie did the most pull-ups I've recorded at 19. Uh, Dean could do 74 sit-ups. And then Chris Clutie's 3K time trial was really phenomenal. But there were players that I've come across that could run 3K in a better time than that. You know, and those players never ever went on to make it. And this what made me start questioning. Why is it that some guys make it and why is it that some guys don't? You know, and the biggest thing that I know I've touched on already is, is in that preparation area is your sort of family, you know, environment is what really will determine whether you make it or not one day. And what I mean by that is, you know, if a player gets sent out of a province to boarding school and he's not near his family environment, you know, they're going to have a less of a chance of, of really making it one day. And if you just look at the summary there, uh, most of them were born in the first six months of the year or there and thereabouts. They are barring Kevin. They all had an older brother. Uh, you can see how they didn't specialize in any particular sport. I know Chris Clutie did, and they all could play more than one position. So guys, I'm hoping that you can pull something out of this and, and hopefully it'll help you with your own uh, uh, view of, of whether you're going to make it or not one day.